Don't worry, babe. It's not an earthquake. It's the mini earthquake. So much base in such a small package? You should know by now. I can do some big things with small packages. Oh, like the dinos. Exactly. You know what? That's enough about the dinos. Let's go ahead and show you how to make the mini earthquake. This was just a fun little project to do with the Tank Man W5 woofer. I've had so many of these subwoofers and I've just been so impressed with them. I wanted to find a cleaner way to get bass somewhere without a port. And so I came up with this passive radiator setup using half inch plywood. And what you're seeing me do is just cut some half inch birch ply. Now this is just an eight inch by eight inch cube. I give the whole directions on how to make this in the description down below. There's a link to my website. You can just go ahead and follow the directions if you want to make it. But this was a hard one to come up with. I wanted something really small that would work on a desktop. And that's really what we did with this. And so we paired it with two ND140 passive radiators. Links to every part of the use is in this description as well. And it really came out really well. It tunes it to about 50 hertz. It works perfectly for like a desktop build uh, or maybe a small bedroom. You can cut this out however you want. You don't need to flush mount this. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go all out for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and use the CNC. So I CNC cut everything out. Uh, four and three quarter inch hole for the passive radiators. You'll need two of those because you're using two passive radiators. And then whatever you decide to use for the subwoofer. Of course, if you don't have those types of tools or don't have access to a CNC, you could literally just use a jigsaw and skip flush mounting everything and just mount it on the outside. If you don't have access to a lot of tools, you don't need a lot of tools for this. I mean, literally you just need to make an eight inch by eight inch cube and you could make any type of hole as long as the subwoofer fits in there. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting these holes is these passive radiators. So I'm using the Neo version of the W5 subwoofer, and that's because the regular woofer, the W5 1138 SMF, will not fit in between the two passive radiators. So I say this because I centered all the holes for the passive radiator and of course for the subwoofer. If you don't center these, you need to push them at least further to the back. If you push them any further forward, you're going to have issues when you end up mounting it because the motor itself will actually hit the passive radiators. Now I chose to rear mount my passive radiator, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a round over just to make it look a little bit nicer. That's a personal preference. Keep in mind that if you rear mount these which i'm going to show you in a minute Ugh, man you cannot get back to them without destroying the box And what I'm gonna go ahead and use here is a furniture wax. It's gonna be hard to get in there once I get those passive radiators on there. So I'm just waxing where the passive radiator goes. And you can wax as many times as you want and buff it out. It's a real easy finish to do.
Sometimes what I like to do is just use a foam brush to add the glue to everything. It makes it a little bit easier, especially if you're in a hurry trying to put all the pieces together. You are going to need to eventually clamp these all together. So you're going to need to clamp the sides and the back together. That's the way I'm doing it. I'm just leaving the front off for now. Remember, keep the front off if you're going to rear mount those passive radiators because otherwise uh, you won't be able to mount those passive radiators in there. Now, I don't show you all the clamps I use, but I did use a lot of clamps on this little thing. When you mount these passive radiators in there, it's hard to find screws that won't go through the back. I mean, you almost need like a quarter inch screw if you're doing it the way I do it. So I just use a couple washers, number six size washers, and screw it in with those washers. And it really makes it a little bit easier to do. And you don't have to worry about going through the wood on the other side. I also have this really cool tool that I love. It connects to the your drill and allows you to get in really tight spots. I use it a lot on speaker belts where I have a hard time getting into these places. I'll link that in the description of the video if you're interested in picking one of those up. They're pretty cool to have around the shop. Now once again I'm just going to glue on the top. What I would say is before you mount it completely and glue it on, test fit your subwoofer. One thing I like to do is you're going to get little tears sometimes in your veneer. That happens from time to time. I like to use this Timbermate stuff. It's really nice. You can mix them together to get the color you want. So I like to do all the edges just in case there's any chips or anything in there and sand it down flat. And you're going to really see this wood grain pop when you add this on there. Like I said, add as many coats as you want and just keep polishing and buffing until you get the color you want. For speakers, this is really something that's an easy finish anyone can do. And unless you're going to be putting drinks or something on it, which you shouldn't be on a speaker anyway, this is going to be a really nice, durable finish. If you ever need to add some more, you can add it at any time. Now as far as hooking this up, I did a passive one, so I used just a terminal cup on the back, but you could use anything you want. In fact, the LP210PA would be a great little amplifier to put on the back. It has a two channel output on the backside, so you could power the subwoofer, and then of course two external speakers. Um, or if you wanted to use like a desktop amplifier, uh, there's a couple different options that I actually put inside the link. So if you go to the, the link to Toyd's DIY Audio, you'll see a couple different options that you can use to really power this. But really the choice is yours. I gotta say, I really love how this thing came out. It's so small. It's just eight inches. It is tiny, and yet it puts out a tremendous amount of bass, which is why I called it the Mini Earthquake. Now let's go ahead and do a couple test sound tests on this thing. Yes, I 
So here's a, some good pictures just showing you the size. It really is a really small subwoofer. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and like the video, and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you back for some future videos. As for now, it's 123 Toy, and I'm out.